Hey there, I'm Sarah A. Chrisman, the author of The Tales of Chetsamoka and a lot of other books about the Victorian era. And I'm here today with the Calico Club. And today we're going to be reviewing one of my favorite books of all time, Paul Leicester Ford's The Story of an Untold Love. Now, before we get started on the book, I want to tell you just a little bit about its author, because he had a tragically short but pretty fascinating life. Paul Leicester Ford was the great-grandson of Noah Webster, and uh, he's also the best example I know of, of the axiom that the best education comes from a collection of good books. Now. An early spinal injury kept Paul from going to school. Some people say his spine was injured when he was born. Some people say it just happened when he was very young. But in any case, the key thing to remember is that he wasn't able to go to school. His sister tutored him for a while in um, English, French, Greek, and American history, but then she got married. So she moved out, and he was left to his own devices to get his own education from the family library. Now, being the descendants of Noah Webster, and Paul's mother was also good friends with Emily Dickinson, which if you know anything about Emily Dickinson is pretty hard, because she was a notorious recluse. Anyhow, the Fords had an amazing library, very much like the library of the main character in the book which is part of why I love this book so much. There are a lot of semi-autobiographical elements in it. But Paul's family had a family library of over 100,000 books and 60,000 manuscripts. Most of the manuscripts were about early American colonial and revolutionary history. And this is pretty much every bookworm's dream, especially a young bookworm, to be told, hey kid, you don't need to go to school. Just uh, hang out in our family's amazing, fantastic, fabulous library and read all day. And that's exactly what he did. And uh, by 1876, when he was 11 years old, in 1876, when he was 11 years old, someone gave him a little printing press. And being precocious, he started right away to reprint manuscripts from the family's fantastic library. And this was pretty much the best training he could have possibly had for his later career as a writer. Because before you can write, you need to know how other people have written their books, and you also have to have a really broad base of subject knowledge of a lot of different subjects. So reprinting these rare manuscripts from his family library was the perfect training. And if anything, Paul's love of books only grew with him as he grew up. As an adult, he was friends with Melville Dewey, who we now remember best be as the creator of the Dewey Decimal System. Paul was also a correspondent of Mark Twain and Rudyard Kipling, along with a lot of other literary greats. And then Paul contributed his own works of fiction and nonfiction to the world. Then, tragically, when he was 37, Paul was shot and killed by his own brother. Very sad. Malcolm Ford was sort of the black sheep. Well, not sort of. He was the black sheep of the Ford family. He was a jock in a family of academics, and uh, he never really worked out a way to make any money from athlete athletics. So he was just always mooching off of his other relatives. And when Paul finally told him, I've given you enough money, I'm not giving you any more money, Malcolm took out a gun and shot him through the heart and killed him. Then Malcolm shot himself. So just terribly tragic. A terribly tragic end to a really amazing writer, and I can only imagine what other books he would have contributed to the world if that hadn't happened. It's very sad. Yeah, 
that. It was a terribly, terribly tragic end for someone who wrote such beautiful stories. Uh, shall we get back to the one that we read? around a poor writer who's in love with a rich socialite. So, girls, what did you think of Maisie, Donald's love interest? Let's stick with the story, girls. Thank you, girls. Let's just have a few favorite quotes from the book, and then we'll sign off.
Thank you, girls. I think those are some great choices from a great book. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a nice thumbs up and remember to tell your friends about the Calico Club and about my books. Book 8 in the Tales of Chetsumoka, A Bumpy Road to Marriage, just came out and I hope you will love it as much as I loved writing it. Happy reading!